All right, welcome. Uh, this is another episode of Flavor Q and A, and today we're going to continue with why use film. Um, in another episode earlier, we spoke about archivability, uh, and today we're going to look at um, lenses and and medium size. So this is a Mamiya RZ67. It's designated 67 by the size of the film, which is 60 mil by 70 mil. And it's significantly larger than 35 mil. So one of the advantages um, for having a larger file or film medium or film size is that you get, you get more real estate. Um, you get more real estate. And what I mean by that is if you're using a 50 mil lens on a 35 mil camera, um, then you get however many degrees in, in width. And generally 50 mil on 35 is, you know, it's a standard, you know, it's a standard uh, width. But when you take a 50 mil lens and you use it on a 6.7 medium format camera, you get a much, much wider uh, frame. So the frame is much wider. And the most important thing about that is that although you're getting a wider frame, you're getting the same range of compression as a 50 mil in the 35 uh, camera. So if you're, if you're, if you're familiar with uh, compression or, or, or depth of field, and if I have, I have this object and I focus on this object, then the depth of field is how much will be in focus, both in the background and in the foreground. So that's, a, that's related to physics, and it doesn't change from 50 mil on a 35 mil camera or 50 mil on a medium format camera or 50 mil on a large format camera. So you always get that compression. But what you do get is as you, as you increase the size of the medium, you get that compression, but on a wider gamut, like on a wider image, on a wider landscape. Um, and that's probably not as uh, important for 50 mil, but when you start going into uh, like this one, which is 110 mil, um, then it starts to make a big difference because you, you know, if you're if you're used to using 100 mil macro in in 35 mil world, and you love the compression that you get, but you're only really getting this in terms of your framing. Well, when you move to this, you get the whole frame. You get a much larger frame. Um, but you still get the same uh, compression characteristics in the lens. So, for instance, you know, this one, even out to five meters, you're still going to get, um, you know, great compression at, at 2.8. This lens is a 2.8 lens. So, um, basically, it allows you to, to get more compression so me medium format like this allows you to get more compression, uh, more compression in your image, and have more real estate in the image, um, and that is what gives medium format its look. And when you compare an image shot, say, if you and and you know like if if you took an image, the shot on a on this one at one hundred and ten using the 110 mil 2.8, and then you use a 35 mil camera and use, say, 105 mil macro lens uh, at 2.8, you're going to have the same, uh, and you shoot them at 2.8, for instance, at, a, at, let's say, you know, we have the subject at three meters, you're going to have the same range of compression within the image, 
but you're going to see more of the image on a medium format. And what that does as well, because you're seeing more, you're seeing further into the background and into the foreground, which gives it, it make, makes it melt more, right? Because you have more of that compression effect happening um, within a larger frame uh, in the image. So that is definitely a, a huge advantage uh, for shooting uh, film and, and moving beyond 35 mil into the larger formats like medium format and say 4.5. Um, and it gives it that, that look, right? It gives it the look. Uh, and the look is a characteristic of, of the compression in the lenses and the real estate. You get more real estate on medium format to work with. So, um, yeah, good times, really good times. And it gives it, you know, like, it gives it, it gives it, it gives it a totally different feel to the image. Um, and, and when you work with it, uh, when, when you, when you work with that and you can compress your subject and blur out everything else uh, in a, in, within a greater fashion than what you could with a 35 mil system using a comparable lens, um, you get an image which does not have the look of a 35 mil camera. Um, and this can deliver that in spades in the studio. We'll talk about that in further episodes. So, yeah. And, you know, like this camera, you know, you could probably, you, you pick one up with the lens, with, the, with uh, the film back and uh, with the waist level finder for probably somewhere between 1,000 to 1,200 US dollars, which is about, well, in Australia, probably looking at about 1,500 would definitely, you'd be able to find something out of Japan on eBay that would do that. When if you live in the US, then you could go to keh.com and grab any number of combinations of product that they have. So, and when you think about that, it's like 1200 bucks. Even when you consider the film, buying the film, processing the film, scanning the film, it's like to get that result, to get that result on digital, you're looking at in investing Lots, you know, you're looking at a, a Fuji GFX 50, um, which is, you know, it's an eight thousand dollar camera with lens. So uh, it allows you to uh, it allows you to get in the game and produce produce images which are different. You know, like if ninety percent of the people that you're working or that you're that you're in an environment with in terms of producing content are using 35 mil digital systems and you start using medium format film, it, it just takes you to another level. Right? Um, it takes you to another level. So that's another reason why, um, you know, why, f why film, at least film in this format, is, um, is amazing. And like when this came out, this, you know, in what, 80s, early 90s, like this was an, an incredibly expensive professional piece of equipment. And today you can pick them up for like a tenth of the value or 20% of the value that they came out. So, um, and they, they're great, you know, whether it's one of these, whether it's a Hasselblad, whether it's a Bronica, you know, even uh, the rangefinders, Mamiya rangefinders, Mamiya 645, there's so many to choose from and they're just out of this world. And the pricing is, is still quite good. Um, so it's definitely something to consider. All right, that's enough for today. And um, we'll, if you've got any questions, uh, drop it down below in the comments and if I get any questions then we'll start answering those and until then um, I'll just bring you be bringing more information uh, to the field all right 
See you later. Take care. Mm.